What I want to show you here is an audio trick that uh, I've been doing for quite some time, and it's a it's a faster way to mix music uh, in between sound bites. You know, typically you want to duck your music when somebody's talking and then fade it up uh, when they're not talking. So let's take a look at this timeline. Uh, this is a couple of guys talking. We got a little title. We got dude talk. First guy talks. Stable platform for us to produce designs that. And we got some B-roll of a guy looking at a screen, a guy working with the mouse, a uh, little uh, uh, sped up shot we also there. can take those diagrams. Second guy talks and we go to some more B-roll of the, uh, the screens. So what we want to do is we want to drop some music under that. So what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to come up into my bins, go to my audio bin. Here's my production music that I'm going to drop in here. I'm going to bump it up like that. We can take a quick listen to it, but I'll tell you, it's going to be too loud. All right, so in general, uh, when you drop in music uh, ripped off a CD, um, uh, it's going to be too loud. It's just you, you, can't, you can't deal with it when it's that loud. So you're going to have to bring it down. Now, exactly where you edit is up to you. Uh, some people edit at minus 12, minus 6, and it depends on what your final output is, whether you're going to tape, analog, or digital, whether you're going to the web. 90% uh, of what I do goes to the web these days, and I tend to work at about minus 6 with little peaks over that. So the first thing I need to do is I need to turn the... Uh, the audio down. Now you see I already have the little pink line turned on and that you do with this uh, clip overlay tool right here. Uh, if it's not, if you don't see that pink line you can turn it on right here and that's certainly a way to deal with the audio level. I can grab this and pull it down or push it up, whatever I want to do. Now another way to do that, if I double click on that, bring it up into my uh, viewer here, I have a little bit more resolution with this, with this uh, slider and I can turn my music up and down. But what I want to do is I want to show you uh, a much faster way to deal with this. And it, it involves using a keyboard shortcut. You do Command plus Option and the letter L for level, and you get the Gain Adjust tool. Now, the Gain Adjust tool is great because I can just dial in what I want to do. Now, looking at my audio meters, I was at right at zero. I'm going to bring that down to about, uh, I'm going to start at about minus 12. So I'm going to hit minus 12 dB hit return, and my audio you can see here is already down to minus 12, and if I play it back again, look at my levels, I could tell I'm, I'm already much better off. Now I might want to bump it up, but I can do that again with the keyboard shortcut, command option L, dial it in, maybe I want to go up 3 dB, hit return, and now I'm just a little bit louder. But the real thing is, is I need to be able to fade this out underneath these sound bites here. Now, the way you would do that, uh, the way everybody does it, is they will go get their pen tool. Um, I don't actually use the palette tool, but if I hit the letter P, I can zoom in on, I can uh, actually, I'm going to zoom in a little. And the way you do this is you drop a little uh, dot there, and you drop a little dot there. Then I'm going to pan over, I'm going to drop a dot right before I want to fade up and right after I want to be faded up and then I come down here I have to use the letter A for the selection tool and I can now grab that and pull that down so you can see here's my audio dips down it goes underneath and then it fades back up so let's listen to that now zoom out a wee bit it's been a stable platform for us to okay I might go a little more a little less uh, but you know, that's the way it always goes. So up here in my bin, in my sequence bin, I have another version that I've already pre-baked here. And basically I have my two sets of dips. I dip on the first sound bite, we go music full for the B-roll, and then dip again. Here I can listen to it like this. It's been a stable platform for us to produce designs that our owners and franchisees can use. There's your music full, and then we'll dip again. We also can take those diagrams after they've been approved. And okay, so that's great. The problem is uh, we work on things that change all the time. So let's say your producer comes in and he says, uh, yeah, I don't really dig the mouse shot. I don't get it. So he asks you to delete it. All right, well, I can do that. Uh, but, uh, you know, maybe then I want to lock my video tracks and uh, collapse this section here. But the problem is, is that the dip doesn't follow with the deleted media. So if I play through this again, franchisees can use music full, no mouse shot. We also can take 
make those diagrams after they've So now the dip is late and therein lies the problem. So what you want, what you'd like to be able to do is maybe just lasso these dots, but you can't do that. That's not the way they work. So how do you do it? Well, I want that's what I want to do. I want to show you. So I'm going to put that shot back in. I'm going to take this shot and I'm going to, or this audio track, I'm going to remove all the attributes of the levels and the filters that are on it. And now we're back to where we were. So, music too loud. Uh, I'm going to use my gain adjust, command option L, minus about, uh, we're going to go about 9 dB where we want it. And then here's, here's the cool part. I'm going to use the control V, which is the same as the blade tool, and control V will slice any clip that you currently have selected. So I'm going to put a slice there. I'm going to put a slice there. And basically, I'm going to put a slice at the beginning and end of each one of the uh, sound bites. All right? So there, there. So now what I want to do is I want to command click those two sections. I want to use command option L, my gain adjust tool. And I'm going to drop that down, let's say, about 15 dB. And what I'm doing is I'm just dropping the bits of the soundtrack that are uh, in sync with the sound bites. Let's play across that. Okay, here's the beauty of the keyboard shortcut. Very easy to adjust that. I want to go down more. Command option L. Let's go down another 5 dB. I'm just guessing. It's been a stable platform for us. Okay, that's not bad except for this. And if I zoom in right here, you can see there's my little pink line, and then it goes drop, and it goes to the new location. Not cool. So here's what we're going to do. Very simple. Shift Z to zoom out, show the whole timeline. Right click. Add crossfade, right click, add crossfade, right click, add crossfade, right click, add crossfade. So what I do is I have multiple instants of this audio clip that basically have match frames. I have my audio at one level. I then crossfade to another instance of the same audio clip at a different level. Now, this is the beauty of this. If I play across that again, you'll, you'll sense that, uh, you'll see that it's hard to hear the first word. All right, so check this out. I could now grab this crossfade, just move it up a little bit, play across it again. It's been a stable platform. Much better. Now, the beauty of that is it makes it much easier to change the crossfade points or the place where normally you would have the little pink dots on the rubber bands. Now, that really comes in handy. Again, let's say the same producer comes in and says, hey, remember that mouse shot? Yeah, I hate it. Let's get rid of it. So I select that guy. Actually, let's uh, lock my audio tracks again. We'll select that guy, delete it. Now we're going to grab all this stuff, and we're going to bump it right up against the, uh, the last shot. Okay? Now, we, when we play across our music full section, the music goes full. No mouse shot. Oh. Those diagrams after the crossfade's in the wrong place. So as long as I unlock my audio tracks, come in here, I can now, using the rolling edit tool, which I get when I just hover right across that crossfade, I can actually pull that guy, put it right where I want it, take this guy, pull it right, put it right where I want it. A much easier way of changing the point of the crossfade. So now let's listen across both of them. It's been a stable platform for us to produce designs that our owners and franchisees can use. So as you can see, it's a much easier way to do that. Now, the other thing that's nice about it is because those are different instances of the clip, I could still select them using the command key, and I could still drop them down a little bit. Let's say, again, producer comes in and says, oh, the client thinks the music is too hard to hear. You know, it's too hard to hear the people talking. Command option L, you know, minus another couple dB, play across it again. It's been a stable platform. At any rate, using the crossfades instead of the little dots and the rubber bands, a much easier way to deal with your music crossfades. I hope that helps you work faster.